Haile Selassie had a special relationship with the United States. The United States is located thousands of miles away from Ethiopia and did not colonize a territory in East Africa like the Italians, British, and French. However the United States established itself as a superpower after World War II and would have a significant impact on the reign of Haile Selassie as Emperor of Ethiopia. Haile Selassie first gained international fame when he gave a speech before the League of Nations and his plea for help fell on deaf ears. As a result of that event, a generation of Americans was to grow up remembering Ethiopia's betrayal at the League. Ethiopia was special to many black people around the world for having remained independent during the height of colonialism in Africa. African Americans spoke out against the aggression of Italy on Ethiopia. However, the United States government was against intervening in the fight between Ethiopia and Italy and limited African American support. The United States had taken a position of neutrality and it would not be until the 1940s that a relationship between the U.S. and Ethiopia would begin. The centerpiece of U.S.-Ethiopian relations was Cagno Station. It was vital to U.S. interests during World War II but even more crucial during the Cold War. U.S. was a given a long-term lease of Cagno Station and in return it was to provide economic and military assistance to Ethiopia. During the 1950s and the 1960s, the United States trained and equipped Ethiopia's army. It also got involved in several economic and social projects. Haile Selassie knew that the U.S. needed Ethiopia's cooperation to stabilize the Horn of Africa. However much aid the United States gave, it was never enough. The emperor continuously pressed for more assistance. U.S. support was also crucial in ridding of the British out of Ethiopia, who had helped the emperor retake his position as ruler of Ethiopia but at the same time had become its new occupiers. U.S. also aided Ethiopia in incorporating Eritrea as part of Ethiopia. By the end of the Ethiopian and Italian War, 1935-41, the Ethiopian economy was entirely exhausted and its natural resources plundered. Adding to the existing agony was the so-called protected state imposed on Ethiopia, by Winston Churchill. When it became apparent that the relationship between Ethiopia and Britain was leading to a deeper financial crisis, the Emperor Haile Selassie sought economic assistance from the new emerging global power. The USA, the United States first provided economic and technical assistance to Ethiopia in 1944, However it was the signing of the September 1951 Treaty of Amity and Economic Relations that really strengthened the ties between them. The United States and Ethiopia became close allies right up to 1974, especially after the election of President John F. Kennedy, the American Peace Corps program began working in critical areas such as agriculture, basic education, tourism, health, economic development and teaching English as a foreign language. Several schools and institutions were also established in 1963, several books and journals were published in Ethiopia to celebrating their cordial relations. The most notable was Point 4, a quarterly newsletter on USA and Ethiopia relations. In 1956, Highlights Haramaya University established an agricultural technical training campus in Ethiopia in collaboration with the U.S. government and with assistance from Oklahoma State University. Formerly known as Elmaya College, the institution was officially inaugurated by Emperor Haile Selassie on January 16. 1958, the title of the newsletter borrows its name from President Harry Truman's 1949 inaugural address in which he announced a technical assistance program for developing countries that later became known as the Point Four Program, so named because it was the fourth foreign policy objective outlined in the speech. The Point Four program resulted a close partnership between the U.S. and Ethiopia in helping to establish some of the country's technical higher education institutions. Haile Selassie visited the United States several times during his rule. His first trip to the United States was in 1954. In total, he made six state visits during the presidency of Eisenhower, Kennedy, and Nixon. Haile Selassie believed in face-to-face -face diplomacy and during his numerous visits, the U.S. secured more than half of military aid to Africa and went to Ethiopia. 
During his visits, his biggest bargaining chip during negotiations was Cagno Station. However, because of technological advances, by the end of the 1960s, Cagno Station no longer became vital. Soon after, because of civil unrest within Ethiopia and military preoccupation elsewhere, U.S. involvement in Ethiopia declined. With the fall of Haile Selassie in 1974, the USSR replaced the U.S. as Ethiopia's ally, let's see the speeches made by both, remarks of welcome at the White House to Haile Selassie. Emperor of Ethiopia, February 13, 1967, Your Imperial Majesty, it is a very great honor this afternoon to welcome His Imperial Majesty once again to American shores, he has been our firm and cherished friend for more than five decades. He and his people have inspired us by their heroic example in time of war. And they have impressed us by the wisdom of their advice in time of peace, the most destructive war in human history might well have been prevented if the world had only listened 30 years ago to the Emperor of Ethiopia. Mankind has seldom been offered so accurate a prophecy. And it has never paid a grimmer price for ignoring one of its prophets. I would like to repeat a statement His Majesty made to the world in those dark days before the Second World War. Apart from the Kingdom of God, he said, there is not on this earth any nation that is higher than any other. No one has ever offered a better prescription for destroying the cancer of war, only when this simple, moral truth is finally accepted by all the leaders of every land can we truly hope for lasting peace. His Imperial Majesty has never raised his voice in the halls of nations except to counsel wisdom, restraint, and justice. He once described the foreign policy of his own land in these words, We believe that war has become too dangerous a method for solving international disputes. Man must be as wise as he is advanced. He must allow his wisdom and his common sense to prevail over temptations that can only lead to the destruction of civilization itself. The only safe way for the settlement of international disputes is the method of peaceful negotiation, conducted in good faith, and with the aim of ensuring peace and justice to all. Your Majesty, I am told that in your country there is a proverb which says, Truth, and the morning, become light with time, much time has already passed, Your Majesty. Since you first tried to light our way toward a better, and toward a more peaceful world. I hope and believe that men are closer to reaching that long-sought destination than ever before in history. And our voyage has been guided, in no small part, by the courage, the example, and the wisdom of Ethiopia, Your Majesty, we are greatly honored to have you with us in the White House this afternoon. We look forward with great anticipation to your visit with us in the days ahead, the President spoke at 5.14 p.m. M. In the East Room at the White House following ceremonies on the North Portico, where His Imperial Majesty had been given a formal welcome with full military honors, Emperor Haile Selassie responded as follows, Mr. President, Mrs. Johnson, distinguished guests, first of all, Mr. President, I wish to state my satisfaction on the fact you have recovered as spiritedly from your recent difficulty with your health. It is nice to see you in the state that I find you today. Each generation thinks that the situation it faces is the most serious one, the most difficult one than that which was faced by generations of the past. However, this may be true today. I believe, when we say the task of this generation is burdensome, we mean it, because of the progress mankind has achieved and because of the difficulties that are at times part and parcel of progress and prosperity, we find ourselves at a crossroad where we might make the world safe for our future generations or we might all perish together. The friendship between the United States and Ethiopia is one of long standing. Our association in the past many decades, I hope, has been fruitful for both our peoples. Because the United States and Ethiopia believe in the same fundamental and essential goals, it is necessary that we should put our efforts together so that we may make maximum contribution for the safety and prosperity of the generations to come, in our discussions, Mr. President, I hope we will have the occasion of considering the certain questions of mutual concern. Of exchanging views in a frank and open manner, and arriving, I am confident, at a consensus of understanding, I believe that leaders must from time to time come together, face each other, and discuss problems they share in common. It is not enough that we deal through diplomatic channels, Mr. President, I know of the hard work that you have in your country. 
I know of the immense responsibility you carry for the safety of mankind, for the maintenance of peace. I know also of your splendid effort in maintaining national peace and security. I am glad, under the circumstances, that you are able to consider my coming to the United States for the purpose of dealing with matters of mutual interest. Ethiopia and Ethiopians are laboring today not only for the peace and prosperity of our people, but also realizing the fundamental common interest which we share with other African people, we have dedicated ourselves to building a united and a more prosperous Africa. We found that the interest that affects Africa affects also Ethiopia and vice versa, because our destiny with the African continent is a common one, we have to put up a common effort to see that the continent's interests are protected. As it is well known, the Organization of African Unity was established in Addis Ababa. I believe this organization has made a good beginning in the interest of all of the African people, I hope, Mr. President, during our private conversations I will have an opportunity of exchanging views with you about matters of mutual concern, as well as matters that relate to the Organization of African Unity, let me say, again, that I am glad to be in the United States today and I pray that our discussions will bear fruit. Thank you.